Hello guys and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we are going to take a look at camera tracking inside of Fusion. So here I have some footage that I downloaded from Pexels. Pexel is a website on which you can find uh, some beautiful free stock videos and photos and I suggest you to take a look at it. So if, if you want to do things correctly, you should uh, undistort your footage before camera tracking. But since I have no idea of things like focal length or the actual camera this was shot with, let's just load our camera tracker and see where we stand doing a tracking. So here I have my footage and I already animated a little ellipse mask to exclude the guy from the tracking itself. So let's load a camera tracker. Let's pipe the ellipse inside of the track mask. And be aware that now the ellipse is set to invert so that we actually track everything that is outside of the mask. So what I usually do is go to the option tab and darken the image and then I go, I'd go back to the track tab and preview the auto track locations. So I would lower the detection threshold and, and lower the minimum feature separation so that we end up with more features. Uh, then you want to uh, select the bidirectional tracking and then just hit auto track. Ok, so now our tracking is done. Uh, it's best to uncheck the preview auto track location, otherwise you're gonna see again this preview in the next step. Now let's move to the Solve tab and solve the, our tracking. Ok, as you can see right out of the bat we had these 0 0.89 um, average solve error which isn't bad at all, but let's take a moment to um, refine the solve and what we actually need to do is move these sliders in order to remove some of the features that aren't uh, that good. So, for example, we can leave the maximum, the minimum track length to six, and maybe lower the maximum track error, and maybe also lower the maximum solve error. So now, as you can see, as I'm moving these sliders, uh, these features are selected. When we are happy with our selection, we can hit delete and then we can run our solve again. Okay, now as you can see, we have an average solve error of 0.3, which is great. So now let's move to the export tab, let's move into the 3D scene transform, select unaligned, and then now we have, we just have to select some of the features to set our origin and to set our ground plane. Now that we have done so, we just go back to aligned and now we can add a merge 3D node and connect the um, scene output from the camera tracker inside of the merge 3D node to actually check our tracking. And as you can see, we have a pretty good result. So now let's remove our merge 3D. And now let's move uh, for a second into the option tab and change this from taken from image. At least this is something that I prefer because I find having the um, point cloud um, green to be really annoying. And now we can hit export. So here I have my 3D scene and as you can see I have my ground plane, my point cloud and 
this is all set up and ready. Another thing that I that I like to do is go into the point cloud and change the style from from point from from cross to point because I find this a little less annoying. So I usually like to disconnect uh, my ground plane, but I always keep all um, both of these um, nodes here. I've seen a lot of tutorials uh, where people rush into deleting the, um, point cloud and ground plane. And point cloud and, and ground plane are really, really useful, point cloud especially. For example, let's say that I want to create a plane here. I can select a bunch of points from the point cloud and if I uh, right click and go into the point cloud here I can create a shape or a line shape or image plane or locator so let's see what happens if I create a line shape so as you can see fusion uh, for some reason it creates a cylinder but we can convert it into a plane so here I have a perfectly aligned plane and I can add a transform 3D to actually align it perfectly and let's do something like so so as you can see the uh, point cloud is something really useful that you don't want to get rid of so now I'm gonna use these uh, shape 3D to actually remove the dancing guy from our footage I have a comp already done so it's easier to follow so as you can see I have my image plane here and I added a catcher node and I enabled the camera projection inside of our camera and I set the projection mode to texture in order to work with the catcher and then in the render node I set the render type to OpenGL UV render. Basically I have my guy stabilized in this portion of my footage and I actually selected one uh, freeze frame and I painted I painted out the guy and I added some proto and some brightness contrast to match it to to match it to the rest of my image. Then I took my image plane and I pasted an instance and so now I'm using my render as a, as a texture for my new image plane. Now I have a copy of my 3D camera and as you can see I merged my clean plate on top of my original footage and here I can show you the result. Let me show you what else you can do with um, camera tracking. So here for example I had this shot and I had to do a screen replacement. The first thing that would come into mind would have been to use something like Mocha or a planar tracker, but actually uh, I preferred doing a camera track and the reason is that I have some reflection that I wanted to fake inside of my comp. So here I run my camera tracker. I ended up with a solve error of 0.5 and I had my flow split into, into two sections one was the um, new screen and the other one were reflections so uh, here I found um, this HDRI image uh, online which is perfect for the purpose as you can see here I have this window and here I managed to put this window in so as you can see here 
I have my reflection and is a really it's a really close match between the original and the comped one. Something else that I did using camera tracking, I had this shot and as you can see here I have uh, something really annoying and it was this plant behind the man's head and the client didn't want that obviously so I ran a camera tracker and I ended up with a solve of 0.7 which was good enough and uh, the first thing that I did was actually place a image plane uh, where the windows is in the 3D space and then I rendered it out as an UV as you can see first off I painted out the plant here where the handle of the window is and then I voted out the whole window so that I could with a separate scene add the same mm, image plane as before and I added something behind my window so let me show you the actual result here is the before and here is the after okay another interesting one is this one let me show you what I have here so here as you can see I have two very similar shot the main difference is this prop here so uh, the client ended up wanting this prop here instead of the ladybug but we had a problem with the timing of this uh, actor here opening the door uh, and so I ended up having to replace the, the ladybug the ladybug with the piggy and so I ran a camera tracker on this first uh, footage here I had a decent 0.8 solve uh, error and I placed my piggy in uh, on a on an image plane and rendered it out rendered it out as uh, UV and I also rotated it out and then I ran a second camera track on this footage here and I had a decent 0.7 solve error and as you can see I used uh, my piggy on a shape 3D I was able to replace it and here is the result let me show you the before and after So as you can see, the, the nice thing is that this wasn't a freeze frame, so these reflections are moving. I hope that this video gives you an idea of how powerful 3D camera tracking can actually be and maybe gives you some inspiration of how to use it. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.